Hey guys, what's up? So in today's video, we're going to go over how to properly calculate the right amount of air pressure you should be putting in your motorhome tires. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. So before we get into actually reading tire pressure charts, I need to go over a few important things first to set the table, okay? Tires improperly inflated can contribute a lot to a bad ride in your coach. But on the other hand, if your tires are properly inflated, it can really assist in having a good ride in your coach. It's never good to run your tires underinflated or overinflated. You need to have the right amount of air in your tires according to your weight. As I have said many, many times, in Martin's world, my tires and running them the right air pressure and monitoring my tires with my TPMS is the most important thing I do when I'm driving. Because if something goes wrong with the tires, that's when bad and expensive things happen. If you haven't already watched my part two of my three-part series of crucial, high-priority stuff that every RVer should be carrying with them at all times, you really need to watch that, at least part two. In part two, I went into great detail on our TPMS and the air compressor I use. If you're not monitoring your tires with a TPMS while you're driving down the highway, in my opinion, you're flirting with danger. Now, a little bit of background here. When we bought our coach, we bought it used. It was a 2012, and it all, they had already put on two brand new Mitch's, Michelin tires on the steers, the front tires. But the back duallys were still from the factory. They were four years old. And as many of you know, I spent 18 months getting our coach ready before we went full time. So I thought I'd just wait, you know, until we got ready to go. And then I put four... Toyos on the back. Now, ideally, it would be best to have the same size and the same brand of tires all the way around. But since I already had new Mitch's on the front, I didn't want to put those to waste, but I did want to put Toyos on the back. But when it's time to replace our tires again, I will be going with the same brand, the same size, all the way around. Now, let's talk briefly about weighing your coach. You don't ever want to overload your axles or your tires. And the only way you'll know whether you're within your weight limit is if you weigh it. There is no other way around it. You have to weigh your coach to know how much load is on the front axle, how much is on the back axle, at the very least. Weighing your coach periodically is important too. Uh, once a year is probably sufficient. Uh, because you have to worry about weight creep. You know, as you're moving around month to month and so on and so on, and you're buying this and buying that, it's very easy to accumulate stuff and add weight. And now the tire pressure that you've been using is really not uh, accurate anymore. So that's why it's a good idea to periodically weigh your coach. And like I said, about once a year it should be good. Now, when you weigh your coach, you want to weigh it fully loaded, ready to go. Okay, so that means full tank of gas, full tank of propane, the, the amount of water that you're going to carry. Joni and I, we carry about a third of a tank everywhere we go. Just in the event something happens on the road or we get to a campground and the water's down for whatever reason, we are always carrying about a third of a tank. If you carry more than that, that's fine. But whatever you carry, have it loaded in there before you weigh. Have everybody that's going to be riding in the coach on board, all your pets, your bicycles, any of that camping gear, all of it. Your whole coach needs to have everything on board before you go away. Now, the best way to weigh your coach is do a four corner way. Your front right, your left right, your right rear, your left rear. That's the best way. And you can get that done at usually any truck stop or a Flying J or any place like that that has a cat scale. Now we did our weighing, our four corner weight at escapees. 
Uh, when we went full time, we already lived in Texas. Uh, escapees had a location in Livingston, Texas, which was about an hour, hour and a half away. So we went to escapees and got ours done there. They have what they call Smart Way. It costs $45 to do. It's by appointment only. You don't have to be an escapees member to use their Smart Way, but you do have to go online and register and pay and set your appointment online. Escapees has two other locations, one in Arizona and one in Florida. And when you get your Smart Way, they also will check your height of your coach. They'll take from the ground level to the very highest point on your coach, and they'll also tell you what your clearance is. So it's a great deal for, for 45 bucks. Oh, and by the way, when you get a four corner way, which I said is the best, you get a chart, you see exactly where all your weight is, and now you have accurate information on how to redistribute your weight so that you can try to get it more evenly across the whole length of the coach. Now you can do a four corner way on a cat scale. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's, it, it should be fairly accurate, but for me, you know me, uh, I like a precise measurement. So I went to escapees and had a scale under each individual tire so that, or each individual corner, I should say. So I knew exactly uh, what my weight was. Now, there's a lot of videos out there and information and blogs on how to properly weigh your coach. I'm not going to go into that here. That, would, that requires a whole different video. And if I included that in this video, it would be too long. Nobody would watch. <laughs> but there's plenty of information on, out there on how to properly weigh your coach. But what I want to focus on here is once you've weighed your coach and now you know your weights, now what do I do? How do I know how to calculate the proper air pressure I should be putting in my tires according to that weight? And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so I wanted to show you, first of all, the notes and stuff that I carry. I wanted to show you right now, we have a wheelbase of 228 inches. Our gross vehicle weight is 22,000 pounds. So that means the very most our coach can weigh is 22,000 pounds. Our gross axle uh, weight ratio for the front, our front axle can carry 8,000 pounds and our rear axle can carry 15,000 pounds. And my gross combined weight ratio is 26,000 pounds. That means everything I'm towing, what's on the hitch, my uh, vehicle weight up here, everything combined, I cannot exceed 26,000 pounds. My front tires are Mich Michelin's. Uh, the dot date on them is 16. My rear tires are Toyo 122's, as I showed you. And they are, the dot date on them is the eighth week of 2017. So let's look at the diagram that I made once I got the coach weighed. We have the front axle here, the rear <laughs> axle here. And when I weighed, my right front corner was 3,450 and my left front was 3,450. I was shocked. <laughs> I was really happy to see that those were equal because they usually are not. But you can see when you add these two together, I have a total of 6,900 pounds up here which is way below my maximum on the front uh, axle here. So I'm about 1,100 pounds under on the front. Moving on down here to the back tires, I have 7,450 on the right rear tires, and I have 6,850 on the left tires. Well, that's pretty normal uh, for coaches. This side of my coach right here is where all the kitchen is, the refrigerator, my generator, all that stuff is really heavy over here. That's why I chose and I carry all my tools and my heavier stuff and a lot of my gear on this side. It balances out the weight. So I have 6,900 pounds on the front axle, 14,300 on the rear axle. You add those two together and I have 21,200 pounds gross vehicle weight ratio. Okay. Well, I'm allowed 22,000, so I'm good there too. 
Now that we have this information, now let's go to the tire chart to see how much air I should be putting in these tires. Okay, so here we are at the tire pressure charts. I have downloaded from Michelin uh, the tire chart for my front tires, and I have downloaded my rear tire chart from the Toyo website. The pressures that we're going to be looking at here are cold pressures. So whenever you are checking your tire pressure, you always want to do them when they are stone cold, okay? Usually in the morning. At least that is for us. When we get ready to leave, we usually are pulling out 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. I turn on my TPMS and I'm looking to make sure that my tire pressure, while the tires are cold, are what they're supposed to be. So, I wrote everything down here word for word, line by line, so that later on, if you ever want to come back and refer to this, you could just stop this uh, video right here and you can read it and refer on your own. So let's get started. If you remember, my front left and right corner weights were the same. Remember that? They both had 3,450 pounds of weight under each tire. And combined, I was still under my gross axle weight of 8,000 pounds. If you have one corner that's higher weight than the other, you always use the higher corner to start with, as we will see when we do the back dualies. So in this Michelin's chart for a single tire at my weight shows 3470. You see this right here? This very first column shows 3,470 pounds. Well, I was at 3,450 pounds, so I would fall right here in this first column. But you see how close I am? I'm only 20 pounds difference here. So I will immediately round up to the next column, which is 75 pounds. Now, 75 pounds of PSI covers up to 36.45. Well, this gives us a base weight, okay? Now that we have our base weight and we've already rounded up, this is the number that we're going to be focusing on and starting with, 36.45. So we round it up to the next column, which is 36.45, and we're going to multiply that times 5%, 8%, or some will do 10% whichever you choose to use here. We're going to use 5% because that's what I use. And I'm going to explain what this means here in just a minute. So we're going to take 5% times 3,645 pounds, and that comes up to 182 pounds. So we add 182 to our original 3,645, and now we're at 3,827. You see that? So let's look at the tire chart again. Well, now we got to round up to the next column again. But, it, but you can see here, just barely below this weight right here. But that's awfully close. And before Joni and I came up here to Maine, I did add a little bit more weight. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to automatically round up again to the next column which is 3,975 pounds, and that calls for 85 pounds of pressure, okay? Now, let's talk about why we do this 5, 7, 8, 10%. You have to first have your baseline, and when you're close, you automatically round up. But we have to account for weight creep and ambient temperature differences, okay? For every 10 degrees, that the ambient temperature drops, you're gonna lose about two pounds of PSI. So say for an example, uh, you're driving and uh, your pressure when you left your destination was correct, you were at 85 pounds. You went somewhere, you stayed a week, you woke up in the morning and wow, the temperature dropped 15 degrees or 20 degrees that evening. That means your PSI is going to drop two to four degrees. So when you turn on your TPMS, you're not going to be showing 85, you're going to be showing 80, 81, somewhere in that neighborhood. 
Also, if you happen to be a person that likes to buy things and you're constantly adding weight to your coach, all of a sudden now your weights here begin to change. So the reason that you choose 5, 8, or 10%, and, and, and a lot of tire experts, they recommend 10, but I use 5 because I know this coach. Uh, we've, had, we've been running this coach now three and a half, going on four years. And I like running 5%. Because Joni and I handle our weights very carefully. We don't add a lot of weight. We're not driving in high extreme temperature swings. And at 85 pounds PSI, our coach handles well going over the freeway, you know, those speed uh, expansion joints and small potholes and stuff like that. If you're getting really hard slamming and stuff like that in your front end, the first place to check is that you're probably overinflated which is not good for your tires. So for me and our coach, I use 5%. Now you're gonna to have to uh, evaluate your own coach, your own weights and so forth and, and decide how much wiggle room do you want. Do you want a little bit more wiggle room? Fine, then use 8% or use 10%. But in this demonstration, I'm using 5% because that's what I use. I hope that makes sense. So again, let's kind of do a quick review. We weighed our coach, we fell in this first column, but just 20 pounds under. So I'm immediately going to round up to the next column. Then I took that number, 3645, and I multiplied it times 5%. I took that 5% and this number added them together and that rounded me up to the next column. Now we're at 80 but I want a little bit more flexibility and I did add some weight before we came to Maine. So to be on the safe side, I rounded up again to 85 pounds and that's what we run. This is the front tire example. Now, one last thing I wanna point out here is these weights that come from the tire manufacturer, they already include in these amount of weights per PSI, they already account for the fact that when you get on the road and you start driving on your tires, after about 30 minutes, these pressures are gonna go up. Our tires at our weight, if I start off at 85 pounds, it's very normal for me to run up to maybe 95, 98 PSI after I've ridden on the tires for about 30, 45 minutes or whatever. But that's okay. These weights and that accounting for that increase of PSI as the tires heat up is very normal, okay? So that's why you always check these PSIs according to these weights at cold pressure. Okay, so let's go to the rear tires. Remember my rear tire corner weights? They were 68.50 spread between two tires and 74.50 spread between two tires. These both equaled 14,300 pounds on the rear axle. So I'm still under my rear axle weight here also, which is 15,000 pounds. So we're good there. But this is a good example of how you choose your higher weight corner to calculate your proper PSI, okay? So my higher weight, as you can see here, was 7,450. So we're going to use that corner as our starting point for the all four tires in the back on that whole axle. So we take 7450. So you divide that by two because there are two tires, which is 3,725 pounds of weight per tire. So down here in the Toyo charts, you can see if I'm using this tire as a single tire, I would use this bottom chart. But we're not, we're using them as dually. So I'm gonna use this upper chart right here. So if I move on across the very first baseline they give me for this size of tire at this weight is 3,970 pounds. You see that? So we've already taken one tire that is 3,725 and we multiplied that by 5%, added that together and it's 3,911. Well. Look at here, this is 3970. I'm only about 50, 60 pounds difference or so there, right? It's, again, it's close. Well, I want more margin than that. And like I said before, 
I've already added some additional weight coming up to main, so I'm automatically going to round up to the next column. Now I'm covered up to 4,110 pounds per tire on the dualies. So for me and our weight, 85 pounds is good for the rear tires also. Now let's just say that Joni and I decided, you know, let's go boondocking for a week or 10 days or whatever. Well, we've got to add a whole bunch more water, right? We're going to empty our tanks. We're going to fill up with water. And water weighs what? Uh, 8.2, 8.3 uh, pounds per gallon or whatever. So if I add another three or 400 pounds of water, I immediately know that I've got to add more air pressure. Okay, and it won't be a lot, uh, depending on the size of your tank and all of that. But you've got to keep those things in mind. Okay, if you're adding more weight, you have to compensate by adding a little bit more air pressure to accommodate that weight. One last word here about ambient temperature. The reason we put in these percentages here is to give that fudge factor, like I said. And if you calculate this right as you begin to tweak your coach, uh, you're going to know uh, about that sweet spot. See, our sweet spot is 85 front, 85 back. So as we're traveling through cold temperatures or warm temperatures, and my, my PSI on my TPM as it's fluctuating, you know, a few pounds this way, a few pounds that way, I'm, I'm fine. I don't got to run out with the air compressor and, you know, fill up another three or four pounds. It's just not necessary because you have it built in right here with this percentage that you've built into the tires. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, what you need to do now is use this uh, calculation, use this equation now to do your coach, but you have to weigh your coach first. And just remember doing just an axle weight is not good enough because doing just an axle weight, you don't know whether you have a heavy corner or not. You really need to do a four corner way like we just showed here in the rear tire. We had, look here, there's like 500 pounds, 400 pounds or whatever difference here. So we need to know what that heavy side is so we can make this percentage calculation uh, correctly and then spread that same weight over all four tires. And one last thing about using these percentages. As you continue to calculate 5, 8, 10% or whatever, and this number begins to increase, like we did down in here, remember, and up in here, always just stay attuned to the fact that you don't go over your maximum sidewall pressure. Your sidewall pressure that is written on the side of your tires is the maximum, as I said earlier, the maximum amount of air pressure that should ever go in that tire. If you are loading your coach correctly and you keep your weights within the limits that it's supposed to be and you're using this calculation, you should not be going over uh, your sidewall air pressure. But I felt like I just needed to put that in here just in case. Uh, for an example, our, our sidewall pressure is 110 pounds. I never want to exceed 110 pounds on this. Uh, on our tires but you can see I'm way away from that so that's why it's important to know your exact weights and do this formula and you should be fine now if you don't have your tire charts already that's fine just go to your tire manufacturers website you'll find them there you can download them for future reference oh and I know you guys <laughs> You're going to be sending me comments. Martin, what kind of tires do you recommend? Blah, blah, blah. You know, I just don't want to focus on that. I'm not going to recommend anything. So please don't ask me those questions in the comments. Now, did you know that RVs that are overloaded is one of the main causes of RV accidents? Yeah. There are many, many RVs running out there overloaded. And it's not only not safe for you in your coach, but it's unsafe for everybody around you. And if you get in an accident in your RV and it's determined that you are overloaded, it's going to be deemed your fault because running an overloaded RV is against the law. And your RV insurance company, they may refuse any claims because, of, because you were overloaded. So it's important to pay attention to your weight. 
So again, don't overload your coach. Air up your tires according to your weight. So if you haven't weighed your coach already, the, at the very least, what you should do is up by the driver's seat, usually next to the wall or behind the seat, you're going to see a recommended label there for your minimum air pressure. Start there. You do not want to look on the sidewall of your tires and see the, the uh, tire pressure there. That is your maximum air pressure that you should never exceed in that tire. You don't want to use that number either. So if you haven't weighed your coach, you need to put that on the top priority list and get that done as soon as possible. If you want to know how much cargo carrying capacity you have, also known as CCC, how much stuff can I put in here? How much weight can I carry? How many people? How much gas? Blah, blah, blah. Every coach has a label. You can see ours right here. This is on the inside of one of our cabinet doors, and it tells me right there how much cargo carrying capacity I have. Now, the only way you're going to know whether you're within that limit or below that limit, or if you're exceeding that limit, is if you go away. So now you see why I keep such impeccable records, accurate records. I carry my own air compressor that, that's capable up to 150 PSI. I'm always monitoring my TPMS while going down the highway. This stuff is too important, and there's too much riding on these tires. <laughs> Pun intended. If you'd like to see all the upgrades, the maintenance, and my DIY how-tos that I've produced in the past, if you'll go to our main YouTube channel page and click Playlist, once you get to the Playlist page, click RV Upgrades, Maintenance, and DIY How-Tos. And when you get to that page, there's a whole list of them there. Lots of good information there. I'm also going to provide links to my TPMS and my air compressor. If you go up to the video, right underneath it, you'll see Show More. Click that, scroll down, they'll be right there. And I'll also add a link for escapees there if you're interested in that too. If this video helped you, if, if, this, if you like this video, guys, give me a like button and let me know that you liked it. That'll encourage me to do more. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. These videos are free. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. But once you subscribe and you ring the bell off to the right, you'll be notified the next time I upload my next free video. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around. <music>